Okay, so I'm using a 25 pip grid on the on the right side of the chart here. And this is um, on top of a 100 uh, pip, which is this big uh, black line is the 100 yard line. This is the 50, the 100 again. So this is the 25s. And you could put a 10 on top or something if you're scalping. But uh, here I think that if you're going to trade with a 25 pip stop for all your entries, um, I have a gr gray uh, bar that I built. It's about six pixels fat, I think. So if you go blow by blow here, and of course right now uh, you would have sold your longs or you just went short here at the end of the daily uh, thing. So there was a signal here to sell uh, just because it's heavy up. So I'd sell a 1K, say here. And I put a hundred pips stop on that risk ten dollars, or you could just uh, trade without stops, I suppose, if you're just trading one case. How much damage could you possibly do? Uh, if you imagine putting in, uh, now let's just imagine you got a thousand dollars in the account, you're going to trade one case without a stop. How many pips can one ticket go against you before you blow up the account? Um, let's assume here that. We've only got uh, $100 in the account. We can do um, 10 100 pip stops, 10K, 100 pip stop, and then it's bye bye. Right? So I could sell one at the market and put in for the next, well, the next week. So I don't think there's a problem with placing all your orders in advance. <laughs> like I don't, I don't think it's going to make any difference. I thought it would once. There's a time when I thought, well, no, I have to see what's going to happen. But I just don't care anymore. So I think I put a sell limit here all week long. Every 25 pips. Okay, now, you think by the end of the week, we could go up here. Would you sell up here? These could even be Fibonacci. <laughs> numbers up here i mean anything's possible but seriously why aren't you selling up here well that's quite a stop there that's a 200 that's i'm risking 20 bucks if i sell right now the stop here and then i in essence load up uh con on the contrary side what's it going to look like right Oh God, it's going to be like this. If I just sell into this uh, randomly, or, and I also buy into it, I put buy limits in here already. I'm working on it. If I just bought for here, and this, uh, this I would time out. I wouldn't, like I said, uh, you could just throw in these orders with your right mouse click. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, I think here, next four hours, I'd buy here all the way to here. So now I would put in one case. I have a stop here. And then I have another stack that lasts longer. It lasts out in the space here, if you can imagine. Of course, it lasts all the way through that. But as time goes on, and this is the end of the next month. So... Would you buy the New Zealand dollar if it went down here? Uh, can you imagine it going down there? Yes. So who's not buying down here? So we know this is a good place to buy. We're not going to need any other info. This is the saddest thing about trading is it's so fucking retarded. You just throw up. This is a baby top here. Gee, I wonder why that's market. And look at this hammer. And then look, oh, geez, a little stop hunt. And then ripping your face off. Like, you could make the argument that it broke this trend line. Um, but this is really just, like I say, an indication of volatility. This triangle is volatility drying up. And when you have this auction in a 50 pip window here, about 60, 70 pips. If you're buying every 25 pips, right, 
And now you're buying more. The deeper it goes, so you'd buy a 1K, a 2K, a 3K, a 4K. In total, you've got like, I don't know, 7K, some shit. If you dump the whole thing here, when it comes ripping back into the floor, and it actually does the floor on close perfectly. In other words, this baby top followed back to the last known bottom. I wouldn't consider this one anymore, and to me, this is meaningless now. So you have to keep current, uh, the charts up to date as far as what's going on with this poor patient here. Now this eight hour, this uh, two day basement, so that's a 48 hour basement. That's a big deal. And even the goobers got it right here. Uptrend, sell hard, barely a scalp out of that. Then here comes the trend continuation fuckers. And they've got their goober buy stops. And it's so funny because the people that are sitting there with their fib and all that stuff, they don't realize the mechanical traders that just, okay, you could claim they got stopped out here, but what if they're really conservative bozos? They got a sell stop here and a buy stop way up here because if it really goes, it's really going to go. But that presupposes they held here and did not get their balls handed to them here. You can tell me all day long about this trend shit, but where's all the real money? It's right here on this little stop hunt, these little stop hunts. And it does matter what time frame you're on, but you wouldn't trade the uh, five-minute chart like that. You wouldn't trade anything like this where you're putting buy stops here. Oh, maybe the one-minute chart, right? This thing's going to be, it better be blowing through. Now here... You could say, oh, I put buy stops in like a goober. Look how much money I made. Like, you're full of shit. Yeah, but that's not the same pattern as this first top means you need to sell here. In other words, you put a sell limit here because you know this exists. You put a sell limit here because you know this high exists. You put a sell limit here and it, and it gets filled. You can't see it on close. You put a buy limit here because you know this is good. You put a buy limit here because you know it's good. Now you're gonna tell me, well, look, it made a low, it made a lower low, and it took out. Yeah, that presupposes I'm trading with a straight stop on everything I do, which you would if you're risking two percent of your account. You have the same, and still you start to lose more money, and you'd bet less when you really got to pile in and bet more. So this is another counterintuitive thing. I think that people are like, well, you know, uh, don't. Yeah, double down, of course. I mean, but well, double of what? How much money? So if you can still keep shooting, like look at these first shooter games. The gamers should understand this one. I see gamers out there, people that uh, have uh, the first shooter. I mean, you're not sitting there getting out a fib tool and lining it up with this enemy and taking one shot. Fuck no, you're just you're just... You got like this infinite infinite magazine of uh, what do you got a hundred rounds or some Gatling gun. And here, you know, on the daily, oh my god, this is stupid. It's kind of risky, but not really on New Zealand. The thing hardly fucking moves. Yeah, this is a big crush down here, and you know, I, for me, I just can't imagine not having um, a buy limit here. And buy limits all up in here. Now, this is some, this is 100 pips of crush. Now, certainly the mechanical traders cleaned up here. The people that are waiting for a 25 pip day to put their trade on. Here's their 25 pip day. Now, it doesn't mean that they, if their targets are down here and they're saying, well, I got these killer ratios, man. It's like this to make this. Like, I'm so greedy. If you have a trailing, not to mention the money management, what's that look like it's running on here? You get filled on this bar, right? It's coming down. I'm speaking mechanical stop entry here. You're filled uh, south, and they start to run a trailing money management stop. Well, it's break even. You never realize this. Because you're not looking at this, maybe. This whole this whole section. 
right? Because that's what, and this one here. So you're trapped below unfair value. Everybody said, well, the move, and even the moving averages would get it right on this one because they'd be all laggy and they'd be like, oh, yeah, look at my moving average, see? And you have a, a top become a bottom and you could have all this bullshit with MACDs crossing over and then you can tell me all day long how MACDs is the best fucking thing since Fibonacci. I'm sure it is. I'm not saying it's not, but look at these dumbass trades here that have nothing to do with an indicator. And this, uh, so you have this, also this is the good old fashioned 100 pip yard line, which the market doesn't have to turn there, but it may amazingly does it. You know, you could say, oh, it really turns to the 25, but if you're giving yourself 25 pip stops and you're running 50 pip stops and you're running 75 pip stops, you can see that you have a lot more flexibility because you could sell here with a 75 pip stop and that's going to get out down here. And you also have the scalp in here with this stop, a sell at the market with this stop, and all of a sudden you're in 4K and you're making money from a scalp, from a thing. Now you just keep on building on that. Now you could just trade this one dumbass currency on the daily without even fucking paying attention. What's the trade now? Well, buy limits back here at the breakout. All week long. I'd be buying, in fact... Every day that this thing comes in quieter now, you're kind of expecting, when you see this thing rip down here, take out this basement and stop down, you're also allowed to buy that at the market because it is a um, down bar. And I'm saying in my system, I'm allowed to pull the trigger. I, I, I just hate chasing. Like I refuse to fucking buy this right here. Even though it's going up, I'd have to justify that by saying, well, I'll put a buy limit here. There's no fucking way. I've just been raped too many times. Okay? I don't want to walk bull like the rest of my life. At the 50-yard line here, you can make all sorts of suppositions. But this is a, a, a retest in time on the on the daily now. I think this might have Sunday night in it. So I don't know. This is kind of a cheating chart. But also, this is the end of the month. This thing comes ripping all the way back to here. Oh, my God. Look at that. In one day because it's it's satisfying the need to cut into this crap here all these rooftops bing 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 pop can't get to this one but we're all gonna sell here aren't we for the scalp are we retarded no so somebody's sold into this already i can see with a limit here right i can see that is a good strategy because um, by tonight, we could be here and I would cash out and take a loss on this first one, maybe. Or let that linger and let that one finally cash out. So how do you scale into these things to really uh, make these crazy trades and then just come in with sell limits like this and just step back and let the market come back into your limit trap? Meanwhile, you can still pay attention to these markets that are that are just um, stalled out, itching to be uh, loaded on a um, four-hour daily time frame. They're just they're asking to be traded, these fucking things. Look at this. Um, this is the uh, Swiss franc. I'm going to load this top later. This is mind-blowing. Look at this thing cut up into that hole and rip back. It's just... It's just staggering. It's so retarded. Um, look at that. Right in the monthly. Closed up two months hard. I, this thing's just itching to go up. I just think it's hell-bent on going up. i got to fix the scale here. I can't see what the hell's going on. There's too much data on the screen there. So here's the look on the 25-pip grid. And it just comes flying off this top here. But we all knew that giant vacuum was going to get sucked and raped. Who couldn't see that coming? You'd have to be out of your fucking run retarded not to see that window. I marked it off like fucking two weeks ago. Like, yeah, who's not selling up in that shit? Easy, high probability rip back. Not to mention, it's, it happens in moments. 
in one fucking day. So as this thing comes ripping back, this is not a pit for pit correlation, but you know, the uh, um, Australian comes ripping the other way. So here's, here's another template. I was joking about this is the 80 period moving average with a 20 EMA. So that's a 20 EMA with an 80. This is 60 pip, uh, a 60 uh, period envelope there on top of that. And look at the crossover work beautifully. I bought right here at the crossover. Look at that. I, I'd say a little bit late though, huh? Um, but I did what I was told, you know, it really made me feel good. Got in here. Let's see, the crossover is one bar before that. So I wasn't that stupid. Uh, yeah, moving average crossover systems. A little tough, huh? Well, that's the larger trend you're looking at there. I can't, I can't, I can't move this fucking bar. Here we go. I got to take this back to the pro. It's just be, it's right in between bars. Holy shit. Well, you see, that's what makes it so difficult. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like halfway through that bar, man. So I need a two hour chart, but look at this crazy shit. I used to look at this thinking, okay, well, if I was to follow the rules of moving average crossover, that, okay, I could have bought down here, but that wouldn't, uh, GB the crossover. What are we saying? Then you could say, well, the one's crossing over the 20. And, okay. Uh, moving average crossover system. Oh, it just breaks my heart. Look at that. Well, now you're supposed to sell. It's in a downtrend. Okay, Jethro. God, look at this. You really can see that moving average on there. How ridiculous. Oh, I'm getting whips up. Yeah, this is what this guy, this 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 bozo that made a bunch of money trend trading, this guy that sings the banjo song, the trend song. I'm like, dude, listen, you goof. It's a choppy... Fu oh, so he's going to sing... He plays had to play a banjo because of this shit. Yeah, I know. I wish Mark was like the, the 80 period EMA, that magical period. So I'm just going to range trade it. Swing trade it, same thing. I think, but I like the I like that trade. And so here I went flat, reloaded. I got pendings. I'm still in the um, I'm still in the Australian CAD for some reason. I didn't look at it, but uh, I put that trade on just throwing a grid out there. So let me see. I'm gonna probably dump out of that and go flat. But yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Trading is so stupid. It's funny. It, it attracts a bunch of people that uh, want to uh, uh, draw a bunch of uh, geometric shapes on top of it. I guess it's like getting clothes for a girl. I guess the market's like a mistress. You take her out to the store. Get her some shoes. Here it is. Okay, so I went long here for some reason. So I'm going to dump out of this thing because it's it's done. And I would... So I'm out of flat. All right, so I'm going to come in here with the limits again. I think this is a... Um, okay, that's 100 pips right there. So I'm just going to come here like a goof. I'm going to place my order right at the bottom of that bar. I'm going to put a 2K, and I'm going to put a 3K. So I'm going to uh, fatten up as it drops. And these are good till canceled, so I don't really... I think I can handle the risk here on this demo. And so here's a uh, just a clever way to put it in fatter as she drops. Every time I notch the size up, the pending goes up. And then right here at the uh, Curious, just below the round there, there's a 16-hour um, basement here. Looks like a right place to buy. So to me, these are all obvious places to buy. That anything below every basement, I just lay them in. So somebody Skyped me last month and asked, hey, you know, where should I put in some orders? Anywhere. It really doesn't matter in the end. Now, granted, if I'm going to put in a 15, I'm going to come in like here. 
Uh, so I, I can, here I can put a, a 7K right there and a right there. So these are all okay. And I can check that later on. That's something to look forward to, right? <laughs> it's like you tie up a girl downstairs. Hey, let's, let's see what she's doing. And here is the CAD. Uh, this is the classic RSI uh, signals. But uh, I'm not going to get into that. It's just too complicated. So I'm going to throw up this grid, this indicator. I template I just made up with the uh, fancy uh, 25, 1050. It's just easy to get my brain around the, the 100 as the $10 risk. So, and so ten, for 10 bucks, you know, if you told some uh, crackhead that uh, instead of lottery tickets that he could risk uh, $10 on a ticket, he could make 10 or 20. If he just put the ticket, put the orders in, really, I mean, a lot of this has, has to do with showing up. I mean, just put the orders in there and stuff. But I'm curious as hell what's going to happen at the end of the year here. So to me, I would say that, uh, and I listened to Peter Schiff for the first time in a long time. And I know he's a fundamentalist like this other guy, Michael Norman, who's getting clobbered in the markets because he doesn't have a stop in the market. He's getting clobbered on whatever level. He doesn't mind getting clobbered. So whatever your pain threshold is for uh, that particular instrument. Now, you may invest in uh so there was a point in time where if you had film machines now hollywood's going back to real film so people that bailed on film for digital are like wait a minute not so fast and of course uh, that's always happening there's another market there but it's funny that uh microphone uh, that they sing with on stage is still 80 bucks all day long uh, all my lifeline uh for 40 years 50 years, that's uh, 90 bucks for a microphone that you sing on stage and make a million dollars with. It's pretty weird. So um, here you got the gold market. What's the story? What's going to happen? Uh, so here was that big, um, we pulled back to the previous top, right? We could have thrown an uh, like aggressive buy limits here in gold, right? Daily big hole oh gee it's a top bottom back here now you, you could have bought into this too i wouldn't buy like i said it's better to have your limits in and scale into it maybe so my theory is this is going to be a ripe limit 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 all right so this one is currently up if it stopped was this big it's slightly up. This one, if it stopped, was if everybody had a stop that was real deep. And we're also buying this top of wick becomes a, it punches through, but it's top of wick. So this is the window. I'm giving it a window. I've also got a buy limit here and a buy limit here that never filled. And in one day, boom. So I don't know. Uh, gold. Still on the weekly, um, I don't know, it's still kind of uh, kind of brutal there. So also, if I was going to trade gold, I would just say, well, look at the weekly. Would you buy a limit, buy a limit, buy a limit, buy a limit, sell a limit? If you don't want to be in right now, and I'm sure there's a Fibonacci up at this, but this is the vacuum here. All your cell limits. You don't have to scalp. You can just get filled on goofy ass. Look at this wonderful. I marked this off um, in this on the monthly. You'd still you'd be short right now. But what was the trade? Um, of course, I don't trade this as a wackadoodle pair. But it, this was was supposed to be your entry. If you're going to trade this thing, pretty bad spread right now coming in Asia. But like here, it's almost 7:30 uh, Eastern Standard right now. If you had buy limits on these basements, you had to take and here too. This is the ultimate uh, basement, and this one, you no know, fill. So how much of that are you willing to buy? Well, I would say I'm pretty aggressive. I would buy here, and I'd buy here, 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 and. Some of these are going to get stopped out. 
But if I'm going to strictly buy at the 100, I buy here, buy here. So whatever reason, you got some stupid-ass garly shit down here. But put, put one in for each of your dumbass uh, patterns. And that way you can cover all your bases. Now we have the, is this uh, an unfair value that's going to be rejected and cut through? Or is this going to be, oh, well, this is really still structurally the bottom. And you're going to keep going down. Well, obviously, it's going to be some kind of chop in the meantime. But it looks to me like it's going to cut north. So the, um, here, let me throw the grid on this euro dollar. I got more than one euro dollar thing. But uh, this is the uh, one hour euro. Let's condense that a little bit. So here you see this um, just ripping all over the map here. But what was the key? Uh, rooftops here right right here never never tags these guys but right in here this slot is like just your target or your place to scalp into the counter trend top become a bottom top become a bottom you know all the trend line people which is nothing more than uh, volatility is drying up um, we fall into the pit unfair value here's the the scalp that would have paid and uh, this would have paid for the uh, punishment you're buying here a target and if you're buying deeper in this target here and then you just keep buying and you got to play this bounce game but then you've really got to load up into asia last night and see oh boy look at this and really is this so the the question is for anybody that's in this fucking thing when it comes here and they sell they're like oh see a bottom become a top we're in a downtrend we're in a down channel or whatever argument those people the group of people that are there at that level at that point in time are saying that i'm sure in some point and then you've got the people that are like oh no sorry this is all unfair auctioned and this is like the outlier and this is the supposed to maintain this floor and you pop through and this here comes the trend traders and the mini pullbacks they get on these mini pullbacks and they're like oh yeah but now it's going to be for me by limit city and just sit back and watch the drama we'll let the games begin because i'm not going to sit here babysit this fucking shit i'm done with that i'm just i can't do anymore so I just put in my orders here like a fucking idiot. And um, I probably got stopped out of this one. That's why you have to have some scalps built in here. Because you're never going to see what your ego would want to see is this. This. I mean, this is why people make these suppositions. They're so linear. But look how sharp this move is down. Here's the auction floor. And it does hold this time. It doesn't, it's not able to engulf and take that out. And you, the problem here too is that the market is so dynamic that here's your mini, right? This is Asia. Here's the rally in London, opens, comes up, just clips these rooftops, finds liquidity, rips down, just finds, well, runs out of, it's, it's not that, to me, it's not liquidity, it's illiquidity there. In other words, everybody's been satisfied. The um, so the, this vacuum has been satisfied plus rips up there and then it's like okay oh thank god you know we finally recovered back into that and there's not enough buyers or whatever to rip it up there I think everybody's kind of accepting these wicks as being some type of previous support and then once it goes after this one here comes the uh, willing buyers as they would say and the thing, so I have my buy limits start here at the new low, and I'm hopefully cashing out. And if I'm also running the breakout bot, so here's Asian breakout to the downside, not a into London, okay, but then the party's over, right? You got to know when the getting's good, when they poke down and start making new lows. And they don't quite take this out yet, not till later on. Got to go stop hunt these people, so to speak, the bears. Right, the, the guys that they rode this down going, oh, yeah, baby. 
and then they're like, oh, yeah, it's going to keep tanking. I'm sure that's what they were thinking. Like the one guy that sold here amazingly and didn't get out here, that one guy, it could be you. And um, they're like, oh, man, like, uh, or they're saying, hey, I bought down here and we're going to keep going up. And oh, I just can't do it. And, uh, gee, I put it, should have put a water stop. But, yeah, it's hard to step in front of this in every hour uh, or have buy limits here. And then when it's down here, buy and buy at the market if you haven't got enough limits filled. So I would say limits, let those limits fill first. Buy at the market is like a last resort. I try to stay away from trading at the market because I'm probably going to get filled here. And if I'm not here to pull the trigger, I have to be here. And babysit, I'd be awake for 24 hours straight to trade at the market in the counter trend contrarian way that I trade it because I'm going to buy this slam down here. When this market comes smashing down to the 50 or 100 yard line here, I do want to pull the trigger there. That's kind of gratifying. But I could just as soon have limits here at these basements. Now, this one filled beautifully and ripped up cashed out into this now you could you could trade this in both directions you could have bought here and you could have come in here and locked in a winning hedge and unloaded it later at any point simultaneously and there'd be a winning trade so you can corner the market like that you can do all sorts of bizarre stuff i don't think there's a limit um all right this was the known Support, this is supposed to be an engulf, failed, bam. And uh, it's just classic. Now it's just buy limits, sell limits, and just forget about it. Especially as tomorrow's Friday, so what, what could possibly be left on these markets? There's no meat left on the bones. Here, like there's like for me, it's just, uh, you know, you put a 100 pip grid in here, you know. Buy limits, sell limits, probably won't get filled, but at least you feel like, you know what? I'm trading. What the fuck? Got a sell limit here for a scalp off this top. Off this top. Big pack of orders in here. Yeah, you just put the orders in, man. It would be nice if a robot did it, but I guess, you know, um, robots are not going to see. I don't think, um, I don't know. It might see this as being a really big deal. And uh, is it, it's supposed to start putting limits in here. But is it going to overtrade this area? I'd be afraid the robot wouldn't be able to discriminate this, and it would just be like, oh, we're just going to throw in, blow your fucking account up. <laughs> you know, I just don't try. Here I can see these tops. It, it, the robot would have to ignore these internal uh, undercuts here like this. This doesn't mean anything. That's uh, the void that's been filled. All that matters now is this, this. Anything you can look back and not fall in a hole. And that's quite a bit of pressure building up there. Pound New Zealand. Doesn't have to fill. Nothing has to happen. This is still a void here, no. But the problem is the volatility is too high to put on breakout strategies right now. So that's going to have to be all limit trading on that to make any kind of headway on that. For me, it's not, it's going to be limit city. You know, it's just, I don't have to babysit it, you know. I mean, that's, uh, that's a lot of work. Here, I would not put sell limits in really close, though, because I think we're going to go up. So for my first sell limit comes in here. Eh, I'm sure there's a fib handle right there. So I go like that. I'm totally flat right now, waiting to get filled. I sold this earlier. I cashed out of this. Those are sells. But here, way back to the starting gate here, and this is a wackadoodle currency this thing can move just like out of nowhere like just crazy especially in the smaller time frames but i'm just going to throw in stupid buy limits here let me put up the other template so i can see the dm orders coming out i just put willy-nilly 2ks here 
I just set up for next week. Tomorrow, I don't think. Okay, so tonight, consolidation. Maybe there's some burst in the London reversal. Like here. I think in buy limits like this. Previous lows. I mean, it's, it's just so stupid. You seriously got to tell me you can't if you can see the zigzags in here right so you're just telling people look at this wick this this gray area is a top and the line chart is a snapshot every hour so alexander elder would tell you that it's like a film things moving and you're taking a picture every hour where are you at you know, a linear snapshot frame by frame so it's very easy to see the progression and you can also see where it's been and where it hasn't been and yeah you'd have to have you couldn't run a static stop of 20 pips or 100 because at some point you want to um, see the key areas where there's going to be a battle of 35 pips and you want to make those 35 pips are that you're going to see a uh, a fight at one price or another above or below you you have to see that zone i suppose that's the trick looking for the voids and the holes and nooks and crannies where the market is going to invade and then uh so <laughs> penetrate and uh withdraw so there's all sorts of ways you could describe it. And, of course, there's all sorts of trades that are going to fit your lifestyle better than other trades because, yeah, it's fun to scalp and trade with a big thing. But it's a lot of focused attention because you're really trying to thread a needle. You know, you can't really do that drunk. But you could trade limits, swing trading, hammered. You could be a complete... I almost undisciplined trader in the sense of, uh, you know, you're not jogging a mile and then sitting in front of your computer with your coffee at the perfect temperature and stuff. I went to this uh, place with my buddy at the pawn shop and he's got some um, coffee machine there that he pours in and uh, he's got a scale and stuff. It's just... He's got a perfect temperature pot and he's making me coffee <laughs> It's just funny. So, uh, some high-end coffee, you know. But it's the right temperature and everything's just right, you know. And then there's the guy that's just pounding like, um, well, Starbucks is like mid-grade, I guess. Some guy at the Speedway having really bad coffee that's been sitting there all day. It's all rancid. And, of course, if he's making money, as much money scalping as the guy that's drinking high in coffee. And uh, is the, so, yeah, well, that's somebody would say that's your uh, edge, you know, is having this feeling of a uh, rabbit's foot or whatever that may be. It's just as valid as having a cipher pattern on your screen and saying, well, that's what makes me money. And I've taken that trade and I'm going for um, conservative ratio or early exit. Everything's going to be fine. So um, it's just you can't really, I guess you can't, um, you just have to trade the demo and uh, or a small amount of real money. Uh, I don't think you should, if you haven't traded, I don't think you should trade 2% um, of 10 grand or put on like a, a 500 pip stop on a 10K because... Well, you heard this guy. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. I guess it really, I don't know what people's uh, uh, dollar punishment risk is. So I I get the idea that some people's is 180 bucks a trade, which just seems a little steep. I'm thinking 10 bucks a trade. That way I can trade the fuck out of the market. I can have 100 pip stops. So I could swing trade the weekly and just be like, whatever. Okay, 100 pips stop, and do I have to wait for them to stop me out? I can casually trade it like a drunk with a 200 pips stop. 
and there's people that trade fundamentally on the 500 pips stop, and they say, you know, it's, they love it because they're like, dude, I, I was down 50, but now I'm up 20, and I'm out. So, you know, it depends. I Trading really big with a tighter stop is the same amount of risk, right? So you have a standard lot with a 5 pip stop. Well, I'm running a 500 pip stop with a 1K. So it's a huge spectrum there. And the spread doesn't matter to you with a 5 pip stop, does it? If you're trying to make 200 pips, does it matter if the spread's even 10? No. But some people can't live with a um, a loss. Well, I guess they can, right? You're in a bad marriage, say, and you're living with a, a losing, so, you know, you're in a losing trade there. But you stick with it, right? It's it's uh, cheaper to keep her, I think it's what it's called. So you'd say, well, this, it's too much to get in and out of this trade because this this swap and the spread and the commissions. I'll just keep the trade on in case she comes back to life. Well, you know, you can do that with one person, but try doing that with 40 people. And that's what you'd be if you were a master swing trader with 500 pip stops. You've got 40 tickets out there in different instruments floating. And you're like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, I got 40 dysfunctional relationships. It's not likely somebody can mentally manage that. Of course, if it's only uh, $40 per bad relationship, then it's not that big a deal. And you can say, look at, dude, I, I'm trading fundamentals. I mean, um, it's giving you the breath to not get stopped out of that 300 pip stop. So then there's the 30 pip stop person that's like, okay, well, I'm on the four hour chart and it's kind of tight. I mean, looking tight, this stop looks tight on this time frame. You're trying to find a time frame that structurally can handle that and the instrument that has that pip range too. So say you do want to trade with a 200 pip stop. I can go trade the guppy on the four hour chart and get away with murder, you know. I mean, you could probably be 150 pips underwater. They don't stop you out. You're a disciplined trader. You're stuck with your trend plan. You waited for make 400 pips. It took you four days. Thing came roaring back, and boom, you're out. And so the other guy is going to say, dude, I can't. I, you know, four hours is the limit. I'm like, literally trading. Now they're trading 150K on. 100 tickets, right? Or let's say they're trading two Ks. So they got 50 tickets there in 100 K. Um, they're in the market for eight and a half hours. And they made the same amount of money some guys trading uh, half that size. He's trading 30 K a week. So you got to imagine all these different people out there. You know, so you could be any one of those people. It's uh, difficult, I think, to become five people. Uh, so that's not the way it's wired. And the people that are uh, coming to trading are coming from a standpoint of like, okay, I've taken a course and I've read all the books and therefore I should be really good at this and let's go. And then they go into it and they're like, okay, but holy shit, um, the feeling of being in the market is different than the feeling of not being in. But I don't have a feeling that when I'm in the demo, it's just like real money to me because it's really my ego that I'm trading. I, the money's no big deal because you could make it back or you could go sell something if you were totally broke or you just, whatever you're doing now to make money. So the people that are trading already had a day job. I, I, I never woke up. Like, I didn't wake up with a bunch of money in my account. I took the money from my business and I put it in the, in the market. So whatever uh, chunk you start with, and, yeah, you probably want to start with uh, $100 or $200 and trade 1Ks so that you can uh, get over the, uh, the, get used to it if you've never traded before. But even if you've traded uh, for a long time and you want to uh, try a new technique, then you would start maybe with the smaller rig, right? Nobody goes out and buys a fucking high-end saxophone. They rent one until they can uh, justify buying a high-end saxophone. 
So the same thing with trading. Nobody's going to dump 10 grand in a trading account because they're like, yeah, I got this course and I studied with this coach. Well, maybe you are that guy. I'm not that guy. Like when people are coaching me, I just think they're fucking like, that's their uh, story. That's their world. And I think they're conning me into, I don't know. I just think it's like this one size fits all kind of um, coaching. I don't know. Like, if you go to the gym and the guy's like, well, I'm the... Okay, well, he's got a style of his own. And so I feel awkward trying to do somebody else's style. I'm like, okay, I, I see where the right and left hand turn is, but I want to drive my own car. Cause so that, I'm just not good. I'm not a good passenger. Unless this really hot girl driving. You know, she <laughs> she's from South Carolina. But I I, I don't... You know, it's, it's, it's a personality type, I think, because uh, some people are quite content. Those are the people that are all angry as the uh, level two, uh, you know, futures exchange where they see that for them, the transparency is the, well, this there's only one market and this is the market and these are all the tickets, right? And um, th that's, the whole story is here. There's, there's, um, there's time in sales and there's no cheating. And uh, when people say the market's rigged and stuff like that, it's cracking me up. I was just watching uh, the Pete Townsend thing where he's like, yeah, the bank, I'm investigating kitty porn because that's where the banks are doing business. Oh, okay. That's odd. So, but uh, going to the markets like this is um, not quite as dangerous as, as surfing the internet, but, you know, it's when you uh, make it okay to um, be under pressure of n not every trade's a winning trade. Um, not every bullet in your um, first shooter hits its target. So I'm certain that if you're just in the first shooter for the first time and you're not hitting anything, you're like, wow, I don't think I, I did get a like a first shooter coach. You can do it. Keep pulling the trigger. I mean, can you imagine that? Would they have gaming coaches? But yeah, people will pay a lot of money for a trading coach because I think they're white knuckling it. I mean, I was pretty white knuckled when I took over the reins of my own account. So I first started, I first started trading my own account with some hand holding from uh, Jake Bernstein and this his other partner, and. I was like, okay, and then I went back to discount trading because I'm like, you know what? You guys' research is just complete bullshit. Like I, I started to investigate oscillators and histograms on my charts, and I'm like, okay, I think I got it. You know, this is my very first experience with that. It's like 1987. Oh, geez, I, I think um, I'm going to... Uh, I'd already had books by then, though. Just before that, I had uh, some books, and then I just... I went on a rampage, just got totally educated on the whole thing. But then it came down to the fact that I don't think um, I felt comfortable. In fact, the, the more relaxed I was, the more money I made. But then I thought, boy, this, you're just too relaxed. I mean, you have to be... In other words, I went and decided that playing guitar meant I had to learn a bunch of scales So and learn a bunch of scales, but then I couldn't write a song because I had no, um, you know, I just didn't have that gut feeling. So they say, can you trade with your gut? And I thought, well, you know, probably could, but I thought, well, that's not very scientific. So I torn between logical scientific person and wanting to be um, a kind of... Um, cavalier about it and not really give a fuck because I thought, well, you know, it's we're going to take a risk here. Let's just see what happens. But I think I, you, so you have all that going on, you know, if you're in any kind of size that becomes uh, euphoric or painful that, uh, so when I'm feeling euphoric about the trader, I'm feeling like, oh God, you know, I mean, uh, for Half your brain wants to stay in the trade, the other half saying, you probably should just get out because you're up so big in such a short period of time that um, if you knew how easy it was to get back in, you just reload the gun. So that's what I'm doing here. So I cashed out everything in this giant plunge in the new lows here on all these instruments in the dollar. Everything's kind of queuing up for the end of the fiscal year here. you got two months left now, so it's countdown. It's kind of funny. It's uh, 
so much drama has happened in the last fucking month that if you were to just take the last two weeks of news, you could spread it out and it's just a a behemoth amount of typing and talking about the most ridiculous fucking shit that's I've ever seen happen. But it's no wonder. I mean, if you take any month of this year, I've never seen more drama in my fucking life over nothing. What the fuck is wrong with people? Even in, I see it when I'm driving my car, too, now. I see people do shit like, I'm like, really? You mean you're making a lane change, dude, to get in front of me? I'm already going above the speed limit. You are gonna you want to take that exit before me that bad? Okay. I just don't even... You know, I, really? Uh, so, the market is going to calm down a little bit here. Uh, looks like the euro could keep drifting uh, towards the hole, but I want to buy and pull back tonight while I'm sleeping. That's another real uh, great feeling is to put in some tickets and go to sleep and wake up and go, oh, look at, they just fucking blew me to pieces. Now, here's where it pays off to put in the two-hour, the four-hour, the six-hour, the eight-hour tickets. And uh, I'm going to take a picture of my uh, stuff I drew years ago. I'll take some pictures of that, try to do a video about it. But uh, just the sense of the market, it's, say, uh, 10 pips every hour. And what would that look like? And how deep is that? So here in one day, we've got like a 100, almost a 200 pip move here on the euro from uh, the edge of the the new lows there. Okay. You know, coming off lows that go way back, you know, way back on the soul train here, all the way back to this. Just like two pips below this wick. Hard to believe. But not really. Like I said, that's that's where you have to be buying when everybody's uh, like, oh my God, man. Like, and it does seem like it's going to keep melting down. It just seems like that. And if you're there to see it happen, it really seems like that. Well, they didn't take it out. So you'd have to commit to this 100 pip window here and just buy into this thing. I think on the daily, it looks a little bit... Uh, better here on the daily because you can uh, talk about this new low here got this and then coming all the way back to this right there that's quite a uh, a retest two months back two and a half months back pretty amazing and now it looks on the daily also, when you're in the daily, this looks a lot more possible that we're going to pull back here tonight. And next week, we could retest this. Oh, sure, we could keep tanking, but my question is, are you selling it here? I'm not. I'd sell it here. So I'd sell here. I'd rather buy uh, right down here. We may not make it. That's why... On the four hour, um, I would say this is your last known uh, high. So I have a buy limit there. And here maybe they only last six hours, eight hours. And of course, uh, whatever, whatever stop you feel is appropriate. Yeah, you get a prenuptial on the trade there. Because, uh, you know, here, buy limit for sure, right, on this top, right? So we can see the previous tops. This here is based on the daily going way back. We can see how that fits in perfectly to the four hour. It's also the place you're trapped below and pivot here. These trades look fine to me on this uh, on this one hour chart. They look they look uh, strange on the monthly. On the daily they make sense. On the four hour they make sense. So the more money I have have in here, the more I'm going to I'm gonna put in orders like this. These are only two cases, so spread my risk out. Throw a couple two Ks in here. 
and, and just see if you get filled. So you can test this uh, idea on a demo. Just, just they don't need no script. Just put fucking orders in like this. And uh, here, I want to buy down here. This looks like it become catastrophically. Just go down the tubes here. The euro against the pound. So I'll take a look at Bitcoin here. Bitcoin is just itching to tank. It looks like it's just going to turn and, and just crush. And, you know, if we take out this low, even though this has been supposedly trading for 10 years, I think the that big, as soon as it takes out this, and it's, gets, it's getting very uh, scary how the volatility is drying up on Bitcoin. Something's got to give on that one. It looks to me like I would definitely put a buy limit here uh, and here. And if you're real aggressive, you buy all the way down. But when you look at this, it looks so bullish like it's just going to break out of here and take off, which is possible. Both scenarios are possible, and you could trade in both directions. Because you could trade really tight stops right now. Um, uh, buy stops here, but is this going to be the spot that gets uh, filled? Or is this, no, this is the giant vacuum here. But the problem here is this is such a hard um, point right here. This has really got a hold. Well, if it if it starts to breach that, if there's going to be a panic for sure. I mean, we could just start melting down and it just be like people say well you know um wow bitcoin <laughs> bitcoin anybody buy up here i just you know somebody did it's just the cruelest hoax some goober you understand man it's gonna keep going because in other words the argument was look i bought i missed this entry damn it i'm buying it I'm buying it Honey, we're buying Bitcoin. And look, right at the end of the year, like, how cruel this is. It's going to keep going. It's like th this pull. This is the pullback, right? This is where you were loading in at 13,000. Oh, God, what a heartbreaker. <laughs> you know there's some guy that did that trade. There just has to be. Some poor slob. He confirmed it with his wife. Honey? Look at this chart. I know you don't know anything about charts, but let me explain. Let me mansplain this chart to you. Uh, there's a thing called a trend. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now, do you have the life savings that you were telling me about? Remember when I met you? And I said, I'm a, I'm a. Remember you asked me what my hobby was? And I said, I was a market analyst. I still am. And you got money, I don't. So look at this beautiful trend. Oh my God, this was supposed to be like, shit, I built a fucking channel right here, honey. You should see. I projected off of this high. This is what you're supposed to do on the pullbacks. And it was a fucking Fibonacci too. The guys down at the bowling hill, he said, this is a Fibonacci. It's a 3-8 point two they said it's, it's fucking guaranteed they said they were measuring from here to here and this is uh three thirty eight point two and so what i did was um hell no i didn't try to stop I, I just to make sure on confirmation when it closed up this week I bought because I'm like, I wanted to buy here, but I thought I don't trust that Fibonacci. I'm waiting for confirmation. She's up. I bought some right here. You know, somebody did. So there's also a guy that bought here, and um, he's, he's he didn't get out of here. He bought here, and he's like, I'm holding. 
I'm adding to my, there's a guy that bought here. Then he added here. You know it this happened. Now, this is the, the big secret they don't want to tell you about. But look how beautiful this theory of tops becomes bottoms on a trend line. This also presupposes that you are selling here, not thinking that, well, this is just nothing but wave, whatever. This is A, B, C, correction. I'm pretty aware of Elliott Wave. Okay, this is wave three. Or wave five. Here's your A, B, C. C is the biggest wave. Correction. And you buy here. Well, I guess you're not too bad right now. Oh, man. Um, but look how beautifully this this trend line uh, theory works. And this is like a... Um, it starts to look like a GAN fan. Anybody know what a GAN fan is? The guy that was wondering what market profile is. Look, I've connected these two so I can do like, uh, I can do girlies. No, you can really get carried away with this shit. So I'm just warning anybody that thinks that, okay, this is, because the problem is once the volatility dries up here, you're going to have to draw these lines so shallow. Oh, I can't stretch this. They're not going to let me. Bitcoin's off the scale. But if you can imagine, if I take this line and put this in the shallowest trend on here, and let, me, let me just go with the current. It's so subtle. This market is just ridiculous. So this is the uh, current trend line that you're about to maybe break. All right, can you... That, that's that's how people would interpret this uh, long-term trend line. This is your 200 EMA, so to speak. And, uh, wow, you know, uh, if it holds that, people will say, look at, fucking has respect for this trend line, even though it can't really see it. And you're just, all this is, is uh, I'm sure you could do this with uh, any vibration. This is like a nice, clear, clean uh, vibration of the market here. Just like un unadulterated, really. It's raw. It's so clean. Um, and you can also take this and keep moving it down and down and down. It's going to see narrow here. And really, what is going to happen? That's too fascinating. Never, uh, this is the first time, uh, this is like the first time that uh, gold took out $35 an ounce in a way. Not that uh, Bitcoin is going to do what gold did, but I mean, it's just this historic... Uh, unraveling of something this is too fascinating beyond fascinating look at this drama back here now in comparison practically practically speaking this is a lot like that move there in a couple of ways but wow and so if that's the case yeah this would consolidate maybe it's going to go roaring to some ungodly number of course like i said you have to have some the wheels come off of gold and stuff like that. Now, gold is another one that's tragically trapped sideways, just uh, torturing people. Isn't it now? Um, so that is also in a potential melt-up, melt-down. The longer time goes on, the more this uh, vacuum matters, and the more this vacuum matters. If we ever breach, ever dip in that window. Here's your Litecoin. Looks like a buy. 50 bucks. How could you fuck that up? Um, it's gooberlicious. Natural gas looks like it's ready to go pounding north, doesn't it? Hopefully this is an up-to-date chart. I guess it expired. That's May 1st. Oh, no, that's right. That's, that's accurate. Oh, I guess not. Wait. Yeah, I guess that's expired. Anyways, I think it probably went up a little bit, right? I don't trade natural gas, so I would know. Um, what else we got? I don't, got too many more symbols in here. I just did a lot of duplicate symbols. I don't trade all these symbols. Oh uh, yeah, the stock market. I think it's cooked. I think it's done. So. That was a huge trap up there, and I think it's just, I think it's done. That's such a hard sell-off. 
Look at this weekly. Man, look at that. That is just gone. Yeah, I just think it's... Yeah, put a fork in it, man. That's too hard to sell off. Yeah, it's just... It's over for stocks. I mean, look, look, at, look at this. I mean, are you kidding me? Take a look at the stock market. Honestly, think that can keep going up like that? This is so distribution esque. Look how choppy it is. You know, if it, it becomes like something like this, any one, as soon as it goes choppy, forget about it. And this is quite spooky here. People thought that was the end. Like, you know, everybody was thinking, we're going to come back to this. Take that out and just keep tanking and just be like, holy shit. I mean, look at this fucking sell-off. Look at that stop hunt. My God, man. 2008. Here comes the government with legislation to help you. From the government. Here's the beginning of Frank Dodd bullshit. Finally becomes law. Like, around here. You know, sir's cutting in all the brokers and look at this thing just cut flags out man it's flagging now do you really think this is going to be a flag for another move up wow I think it's more likely it's going to be this shit and if it cuts down like that it means it's probably going to come back beneath this flag at some point we're talking way out talking years from now it's fun to speculate years from now I guess and here comes the the yen marching back up from the uh, big uh, smash down the dollar is going to kill this yen it's rearing back we filled this wick window this was totally cashed out sellers came in like crazy there now it's like, holy shit, that's the pullback on the monthly. I just see nothing but free space above. I mean, I'm seeing, wow, this big giant. Like, so this was amazing. Coming up to here. All the way back down. Incredible. This is when uh, that guy Kelvin was saying it was going to go to 107. When he went down here, look at that. That's uh, 25 pip grid there. Not a lot of pips. 25 pip grid. So anyways, uh, that looks like it's drifting back up again. Jeez, if you put your order here at this top, I came back and nailed it. I got you in that trade. Anyways, so that's the uh, the wild world of... Here's the UK 100. Looks dimmed. It just absolutely looks dimmed. Big, big heyday trap up there. It's over. Yeah, this is too good. Time for a sell-off. Okay, good luck. Good luck with that.